Daniel Ice, Managing Director, Equity Research, Wetbush Securities. Dan, good morning. Thanks for joining us. Great to be here. Thanks. Uh, so, uh, Dan, I'd like to focus very quickly on the tech sector, specifically after seeing what happened yesterday throughout the Fed's uh, press conference. What's next for, uh, for the tech stocks, first of all? And secondly, what do you think is going to be the impact on tech stocks, considering more hawkish Fed? I think the band-aid was ripped off. I mean, this is something that's really been overhanging the tech sector so far in 2022, of course, with the horrific geopolitical situation that we're seeing in Ukraine. And I think, to me, from here on in, it's a green light to own tech. I mean, now you know the path. They've laid it out in terms of the Fed. Tech stocks was oversold, as we've seen in over five years. Quality tech, software, chips, big cap tech names like Apple, Microsoft, Google, I think it goes much higher from here. I believe this is sort of a bottom for tech in terms of where we see it. Um, so do you think that um, what we are seeing right now, and of course the recent bear market of the Nasdaq is the worst that we were, uh, how can I say, able to witness for, for tech sectors, for tech stocks? Yeah, and it's the longest bear market we've seen in tech since 2008. But, but that is a stark contrast to the growth that we're seeing on enterprise. I mean, look at cloud, cybersecurity, 5G chips. I mean, this is one where you have to bifurcate tech. Work from home, some of those, you know, called poster child, that's catching a falling knife here. You look at high quality tech software chips, some of the large caps. I think this is sort of the opportunity here. And it's going to continue to be volatile. But right now, Fed's laid it out. You have the worst supply chain crisis that we've ever seen. You're coming out of a once in a hundred year pandemic and you're watching the heartbreaking situation out of Ukraine. So it just goes back to what's the bad news that's baked into names. I believe right here, way oversold relative to how we see the next six in the month, nine months playing out outside of some massive black swan event. Um, Dan, I was wondering, do we have to focus on specific, um, how can I say, stocks or uh, rather than uh, probably more, uh, how can I say, sector performance? Yeah, it's a great question. I think it's subsectors. I think you, you, right now there's three subsectors you want to own. It's cybersecurity, where it's, that's four to five X overall IT spend in terms of what we're seeing. And also with the cyber war underway from Russia. That's names like Zscale or Palo Alto, Tenable, and others. So you want to own cybersecurity, you want to own cloud, especially names like Microsoft, Oracle, Salesforce. And then I believe you want to own some of the large cap tech. That's names like Apple, it's names like Google, and ultimately names like NVIDIA and AMD. And I think that's sort of the three-pronged way to play this. Um, I do see Apple, by the way, which is off about half a percent throughout today's trading session, by the way, 20 minutes into the trading session, and on a monthly basis, it's off about 6.3%. Uh, we're talking about Apple. So what's your take on the stock? And, and, and of course, uh, specifically, uh, what do you foresee for the company after uh, the presentation of these uh, cheaper iPhones and new tablets? Yeah, in terms of that iPhone SE, that could be an incremental 30 million units coming out of the gate, which is a positive. And then right now, it's you look at the supply chain, I think the worries coming out of China this week seems like that was overdone relative to the impact on iPhone demand. Because right now, iPhone demand outstripping supply by about 20%. You kind of combine that with services, where we see this all heading into the rest of the year, I believe this, again, will be a $200 stock in terms of what we see Apple and supply chain actually improving rather than getting worse overall. That's important. Yeah, in fact, my uh, follow up question uh, was about, about actually um, China and the situation over there, because we know that Shenzhen, which is a, a very important tech area, um, is shut down, is currently in lockdown. So I was wondering what kind of um, impact do you expect on supply chain? And, and do you think that they're going to struggle with production capacity? Yeah, and with the zero COVID policy in China, that was a worry. But then yesterday, you know, we saw from our checks and then it was reported that they're actually opening up part of that assembly. So I think it shows that that hard stance in China maybe is not as hard as investors feared. And, and then you start to look overall in the supply chain. They're going to continue to be some of these issues across China. 
But right now, overall, it is improving as an overall supply chain. And as that starts to kind of play out, I mean, right now, 20 million units is taken away from Apple on iPhone because of the supply chain. So to factor that in, that's why I believe this is a way oversold name. Investors have indiscriminately sold off tech stocks across the board. I think Apple is one of them. Um, then final take on Amazon. We're going to witness a stock split 20 to 1, uh, which is certainly an important stock split. They are kind of focusing also on retail investors. Uh, so do you think that this is a good buying opportunity? I think you want to own it because of the cloud exposure. You know, many will focus on e-commerce. That continues to obviously be the core Amazon. Look at what's happened in cloud. Trillion dollars going to be spent in terms of this fourth industrial revolution on cloud. Amazon, some of the parts, AWS, a big piece in terms on cloud. Same things happen with Google and GCP. And of course, the best pure play way to play cloud is that company in Redmond, Microsoft. Thank you very much, Daniel Lives, Managing Director, Equity Research, Webboost Securities. Thank you for joining us. Have a great day ahead. You too.